We are in week four of the incumbent series. The incumbent is the one who holds the office. <laughs> Anybody thankful to be reminded that um, no vote or no amount of what the church does makes Jesus Lord. He is Lord, right? Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And so we've unpacked a few amazing things over the last three weeks. In the first week, we said as the incumbent, Jesus is our chief and calls the church to remove, renew, rally, and redeem. Um, the second week, we said this, as the incumbent, Jesus is our advisor and calls us to endure, forgive, and love one another. Last week, can we thank God for Pastor Dustin who preached out here last week? Y'all love Pastor Dustin or what? Come on. <laughs> Pastor Dustin preached, as the incumbent, Jesus is our diplomat and calls us to receive and extend the peace of Christ. And then this week, this is going to be our subject. As the incumbent, Jesus is our speaker. Everybody say speaker. And Jesus calls us as our speaker to dwell richly in his word. Um, last week, the peace of Christ was talked about. I, I love the example I had as a church member of our family here, like came to me and said, Pastor Rob, I just want you to know how much of a blessing it was this past Sunday's message on peace. Um, I got laid off this past week and she was smiling. That's not normal. She said, the Lord blessed me with that message reminder about peace because God prepared me that as I lost my job this past week, the mission that God was giving me was to go and tell everyone in this moment as they came to say sorry about the peace of Christ. God has called us to extend the peace of Christ, right? How is that possible? Continuing on in this text, now in verse 16, it's through the word of Christ. The word of Christ empowers us to live out this peace of Christ. So let's look, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 again. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Everybody say richly. Teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Um, one of the roles that the president of the United States is going to have um, is that the president will speak. Um, there will be amazing speeches. Um, one of the most epic speeches every year is found with the State of the Union address, right? And so who pays attention to the State of the Union address? Mostly adults do. Um, I'm just letting you know, my wife's a little nervous because she says I'm turning into my dad. Because all I watch on TV is Sports Center and the news. Sports Center and the news. Sports Center and the news. She's like, can we please watch some reality TV? No! Sports Center and the news. And, and so I go into, I care about these things. And so I pay attention when there's a State of the Union address because I pay bills. And I live and all that. My kids don't care about the State of the Union. They want to know the state of dinner. <laughs> right? They don't care. But here's the truth. When there's something in our country that happens, like a tragedy like 9-11, um, like what's going on in the racism and the divide that's happening within our country right now, um, all the different things, isn't it amazing how even little kids pay attention? Um, once again, let's go back. I believe it's the same thing. Maybe, possibly, you have no eagerness for the word of God because you're low level. You're not engaging in much. Satan has said, that's a water boy right there. They don't play in the game. You're no threat to the enemy. I, I want to encourage you to go next level in your volunteering, in your resources, in your time, in your ministry, in your witness. And as you go next level, you're not going to just casually say, I guess I'll watch that State of the Union address. No, you are going to desperately go into and say, okay, Lord, what is your word? And so there's a couple questions that I want to answer briefly. The first question is this. How do you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly? 
How do you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly? I've got four things. Number one, believe. Believe. Um, can I just assure you here today, it is impossible for you to understand the words of Christ without Christ. I mean, not even my doctorate at a seminary will give me the ability to understand the words of Christ. Jesus Christ, when he saves us, transforms us and gives us the Holy Spirit to bring an understanding to the words of Christ. If you want to have the word of Christ dwell in you richly, you must receive Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Will you give your life to Jesus today? If you have a desire to have the word of Christ dwell in you richly, give your life to Jesus. In just a few moments, we're going to invite you to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. It says in the book of John, John 20, 31, it says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Number two, observe. Now, number two through four, I got from our equipping pastor, Pastor Dustin Turner. We have an amazing gift in Pastor Dustin Turner. I was just in Dallas this past week learning with some other pastors on how to serve, and um, they made quite a few comments, not just about Pastor Dustin, but also about Chris. Um, have y'all seen our next series that's coming and the graphics? I assured all these other pastors as they began to get interested in Chris and Dustin that Chris and Dustin have an anger problem. <laughs> Terrible anger, temper, you don't want them on your staff. I do whatever I can to sabotage these people from leaving us. Can we all say amen? amen. Say, go ahead, preacher. All right, that's too much for you? Okay. Um, and, and so, listen, um, Pastor Dustin has provided some resources. If you go online, vintagechurchnola.com, and you click on our resources tab, Pastor Dustin led us maybe a year or so ago, a couple of years ago, through something that we called Discovering the Greatest Story. And Pastor Dustin taught us for an hour and a half on how to read the Bible. And so I'm summarizing it. Some of you are like, I'll never do that. Rob, give me the cliff notes. Here they are. Number one, observe. We must observe. You mean, Pastor Rob, that I'm not going to learn the Word of God just by coming and hearing you teach it once a week? No. I'm kind of a catalyst for you to go into it all the time. You mean I've actually got to remove it off my coffee table? It's a good-looking coaster right now. Makes my mama feel happy when she comes to visit. No, open it. Read it. We, in observing it, read the text Pastor Dustin shares, look at the sentences, paragraph stories, ask questions, look at the point, which brings us to number two, number three on the screen, interpret. We interpret. Yes, that's part of my role right now is I am not just reading the text to you, but I'm explaining the text. And aren't y'all thankful for our V group leaders in our church and the wisdom that's in our church that helps us to understand, interpret. Listen, can I just say in this day and age, you have no excuse, no excuse. There are so many free resources available to us today in understanding the word. My favorite, I'll just tell you my most simple and favorite is the ESV study Bible. It breaks it down so simply. You read the text and then you understand things like context and genre and word studies. What's the theological principle in this text? Pastor Dustin says, lastly, to apply. To apply. Um, not just observe, not just interpret, but to apply. We want to be hearers of the word and then we want to be doers of the word, making specific application for our lives, living out the word. So we don't want to just let the word of Christ dwell in us. We want the word of Christ to dwell richly in us. And this takes hard work. Y'all know I love coffee. Do you know that when I really started to get obsessed with coffee and fall in love with coffee and probably addicted to coffee, um, I um, would, when I would make my cup of coffee in the morning, dump as many beans as I could as that machine would allow. Always something to 
clean up because it's spilling, overflowing. But man, I like chewing my coffee, okay? Um, then God from heaven brought a Chemex into my life. And if you don't know what a Chemex is, now I'm, this is where I probably need counseling and some help and everything else. I dump all the beans on top of the Chemex, so I still do both, but why? I want an explosion of caffeine in my mouth. I don't want just coffee. I don't want, some of y'all make flavored water. I want, I want the richness. Can I say, you know, I want something that bites a little. I want a jolt. Some of y'all drink chocolate milk in the mornings. I don't know how that works. I need a jolt. In the same way, the word of God, I don't want to just dwell in the word. I want it, an explosion of God's grace in my life. Now, climb some levels and you'll naturally be desperate for the word. But hopefully you won't have to wait till tragedy till you're desperate for the word. Hopefully you today will make it your mission to even email Pastor Dustin and say, will you help me learn the word? I want to dwell richly in the word because dwelling richly brings up three final things as we close. What happens when the word of God dwells richly in our lives? Number one, you will grow in wisdom. Remember our series through the book of Proverbs, guys, where we challenged ourselves, it was called Life Hack, and we challenged ourselves to grow in wisdom, to be people who love wisdom. Well, if you wanna grow in wisdom, go into the word. Understand the word. Dive into the word of God. It says right there in the text, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom from the words of Christ. This teaching refers to instructions. So let's overgeneralize. It's not all that it's talking about here, but let's talk about the significance of the gathering right now. You guys right now are sitting in rows and this is a great place for you to sit under the teaching of the word of God. You can also sit under the teaching of the word of God in our V groups, but our V group leaders are not necessarily called to be master teachers. Some are. They're called to be more facilitators of discussion. And so I see a lot of times my role on Sundays, I'm laying out on the table this week of what you're about to chow down on. So we're going to have mashed potatoes. We're going to have green beans, some sweet tea. We're going to have this. You get it? These are the things we're going to talk about. And then when you get to your V group, <laughs> and so this is that teaching and admonishing. V group leaders, your role is to admonish. This is that counsel. This is that encouragement. And so we take the word of God. That's how we grow in wisdom. Isn't that good? Number two, we don't just grow in all wisdom. Number two, you will sing for the kingdom. You will sing for the kingdom. Can we thank God for our music arts team, Pastor Robert and our entire squad that goes across both loca locations. Anybody thankful for our music arts team? Man, I'll tell you. I'm gonna have to start getting all Baptist up in this piece, y'all, and start clapping serious. You, you will sing for the kingdom. Um, guys, where it talks about this, look, you don't look at this in a, formulized way. This is the only way. Paul is giving an example to church at Colossae of early church worship. Um, the Psalms being possibly from the book of Psalms, the Old Testament, like Psalms of Ascent. The hymns being other songs of praise that were sung even in the New Testament from Colossians chapter 1 that we see. Maybe spiritual songs is songs like songs that we sing today that are theologically grounded. Songs like How Great Is Our God. All of these things, listen, let's first establish this. The word of God guides our praise at Vintage Church. Pastor Robert does not get into a room and say, let's see what's happening in the world today and let's sing a cool hip song in the world today to make everyone feel comfortable and then we'll give everybody the word. No, we go to the word first. The word for us is foundational, not the cherry on the top. And that's the same in our music. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I've got friends from my home church, but uh, uh, up, up in South Carolina, I, I, I really am scared to death of some of the habits that we had in youth group back in the day. 
uh, we would take secular songs like Vertical Rising, old song, he's everything you want, he's ev-, and we would sing, this is embarrassing, Jesus is everything you want, Jesus is ev-. We would sing that to people. I don't know how anybody got saved in the 80s. I'm just telling you. And so like we, we, we would sing things like that. Guys, we're not being cute up here. Well, Pastor Rob, you don't wear a suit, and we got a band and all. We're new school in our methodology. We are stinking old school here in our theology. We love the word of God. The word of God is our lens for everything. And so what does the word of God teach about our praise? It's countercultural to what you're finding right now, even in the church. We've turned music and we've turned worship into a fad that's all about us. The focus is my songs sung my way and this moment of praise is my time. Listen, I need some of those. I told y'all I get get a little nervous every time I preach. And so when you see me down here, it's not because I'm necessarily so into the music, even though the music's always, I'm getting some of the heebie-jeebies out of me because I'm nervous. I'm always nervous every time I speak in front of you guys. And so I'm down there, but as I'm praising, I might be at a moment where I need the bless the Lord of my soul. I don't understand why I don't sing that much. (laughs) But that moment of praise, bless the Lord of my soul, is intended, yes, for me to experience God, but for me to not be the bookend of that praise. I am in that moment receiving from the Lord the very thing that's going to compel me out to serve him and to not just sing praise to his name on the front row at a church building, but to sing praise to his name as I go to work. This praise, unfortunately, today has been so selfishly driven and theologically Our praise, our singing is for the kingdom. If you don't like singing today, can I just tell you you're going to hate heaven? I need more preaching. There won't be any in heaven. We're going to be singing holy, holy, holy forever and ever. And so the gift of singing today on this side of heaven is missional in every drive. We come here to be filled up as we praise to keep making disciples of all nations. We close, last point. You will live with appreciation. And this is a word that our entire world needs right now. It says in the text, with thankfulness in our hearts toward God. Do you know what that speaks to? Grace. If you are at a place in life where the word of God is dwelling in you richly, it means that you first received Christ as Lord and Savior because you can't dwell in God's word richly without Christ. And so your very first entrance into, whoa, I just read Habakkuk and it blessed me. I don't even know what that means, but somehow I'm encouraged by it. Habakkuk, I don't even know how to say Habakkuk, but Habakkuk is speak, that dwelling in you richly. Listen to me, my friends. It's the work of God. And so the mere fact that God is encouraging you through his word is an immediate inward thankfulness to say, whoa, this wasn't about me. I don't know this because I studied a bunch. I know this because Jesus saved me and Jesus transformed me. And so inwardly, I'm first thankful, thankful for God's grace because how are we saved? We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. But then as I go inward into thankfulness, I know that because of God's grace, my praise goes upward to thankfulness. And I live with an appreciation for the powerful word of Christ. May we be, Vintage Church, those who dwell richly in the word of God. Let's pray. Jesus, 
thank you for your word. I pray today that we would be not only hearers of your word, but doers of your word for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.